So we're going to write if you are at least 18 years old, then you can register to vote. So again, the part that comes after the if, that is called our hypothesis. The part after the if is the hypothesis. The part that comes after the then, that is the conclusion. So this is an if-then statement with a hypothesis and a conclusion write this, we would say if a polygon has four congruent sides, then it is a square. And what we get on A? If all angles are congruent, then it's a triangle. Well, you, left out, you left out equilateral, right, yeah, which would be important. Exactly. If a triangle is equilateral, is equilateral, then all angles are congruent. Okay, that would work. Did somebody do something different? If if a triangle has all angles congruent, then it is equilateral. Yeah. That would also work. Anybody else? Okay. And B part says Alberto can go to the movies if he washes the car. If he washes the car, then if Alberto washes the car, then he goes to the movies. I agree. If Alberto washes the car, then he can go to the movies. Anybody get something different? That one, well, that should be the way you write that one. Anytime your statement already has an if in it, you need to treat that as the hypothesis. That makes it kind of easy. So it says the truth value of a statement is true or false according to whether the statement is true or false, respectively. A truth table lists all possible combinations of the truth values for two or more statements. So this can get a little confusing to look at. But let's just take this last row out of it for a second. Okay? These two rows show all four possibilities. You could have two true statements. A true and a false, a false and a true, or both false. Right? Think about if you flip a coin. You flip two coins. And how many different outcomes can you get? You get heads and heads, heads and tails, tails and heads, tails and tails. Right? Those are the four different outcomes. That's essentially how they're setting this up. So every time you make a truth table, you're finding all four possible outcomes here. Then, depending on what happens, we, we are able to identify this row. So if our hypothesis and our conclusion are both true, then the statement is true. If the hypothesis is true, but the conclusion we reach is false, then the entire conditional statement is false. If our hypothesis is false, then it always evaluates to be true. Every time. 
So like I, if I said, if it's Saturday, well, today's not Saturday. So my whole statement doesn't matter. So if my hypothesis is false, then the conditional statement always evaluates to be true. Okay? And only... So let's read what they say here. A conditional with a false hypothesis has a value of true, regardless of the conclusion. So that's what I said here. If what we hypothesize is false, then the conditional is always true. Then only a conditional that has a true hypothesis and a false conclusion has a value of false. So again, that would be like something we could make a counterexample for. If it is raining, then it is Thursday. Okay, so my hypothesis could be true if it was raining. But what I concluded was not true. It's not Thursday. So that would be false overall. That's the only way we can have a false statement. All right, so let's look at this and see if we think this is true. If a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. Okay, can we have even numbers? Yes. Yep, so this part's true. Then if the, um, if the number is even, can we always divide it by 2? Yeah, so that whole thing is true. Because the, the hypothesis is true, the conclusion is true, which means the entire statement is true. If a quadrilateral has two pairs of congruent angles, then it is a parallelogram. So quadrilateral means something with four sides and has two pairs of congruent angles. Then it is a parallelogram. All right, well, right here is an example where I have two pairs of congruent angles. The top angles are congruent to each other. The bottom angles are congruent to each other. So because I have two pairs of congruent angles, and this is not a parallelogram, what is this? This is a trapezoid. Correct. So we could have a quadrilateral with two pairs of congruent angles that's true, but it is not a parallelogram. That is false. So that means the entire statement would be evaluated to false. All right, so A part, a quadrilateral has a right angle, then it is a rectangle. So the, the hypothesis is true. You think the conclusion is false? So what would the entire thing evaluate to be then? False. Okay, so in order for the conclusion to be false, you need to prove it, right? How could you, how could you have a right angle that is not a rectangle? A square. Okay, a square. That one shape, I forgot what it's Is a square a rectangle? Is a square a rectangle? A square is a rectangle. What has to, what is, what's the requirement for a rectangle? What's the requirement for a rectangle? Four right angles? Opposite sides congruent. So this is a rectangle. Okay, but it says it has to be a quadrilateral. So you're right, triangles can't have right angles, but it has to be four-sided. So can you think of a four-sided figure has it where it's like a square then it kind of slants Okay, rhombus maybe. We'll look at rhombus in a second. You're thinking of this trapezoid, right? We had a trapezoid like this two lessons ago. Yeah. It's a quadrilateral that has a right angle but it is not a rectangle. It's a trapezoid. So you are right. A part is false. A rhombus means all sides are equal, but a rhombus says nothing about the angle measure. So if you drew a rhombus with a right angle, 
then it would be a rectangle. So rhombus would not work. B part, if X is the midpoint of AB, then X lies on AB. True. True? Okay, can you think of an example? If I had two points A and B, and I found a point in the middle of them, it was X, that it wouldn't lie on the same segment? No, it always have to be on that segment. So that is true. Look at the top one. A conditional statement has a hypothesis and a conclusion. If P, then Q. Right, that's what we've been looking at. Converse changes the hypothesis and the conclusion. So it says, if Q, then P. You see, if I change my statements around, the order that they're in, that is called a converse. Right? Converse reverses the hypothesis and the conclusion. Negation. What do you think of when you say that? Negotiate. Nope. Negative. 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 Negations add a not. In the statement. It's where we change the original to give it the opposite meaning. So if I said not P, and this is how we say not in math, it's a little tilde. Right? See the squiggly line? That means not P. So an inverse is obtained by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So it's not P, then not Q. So let's go through these really quickly. If, if it's, what's a good conditional statement? Give me a good one. If it's Friday, then there's a ball game. Then there's a ball game. I like it. Okay. So what would the converse of this be? The converse. There's a ball. There is a ball game. There is. Then there is a ball game if it's Friday. No. Okay. If you got to keep an if in the same place. If there's a ball game. Then it's Friday. That's the converse. You see how I just changed the order. I changed the hypothesis and the conclusion. What would inverse be? Inverse. Inverse would say, if it's not Friday, then there's not a ball game. You see, inverse is negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Not P implies not Q. So again, if this is my statement, then a converse would be if there's a ball game, then it's Friday. Okay, the inverse of this statement is going to add not in both places. If it's not Friday, then there's not a ball game. Okay, then the last one is a contrapositive. A contrapositive is basically a combination of these two things. We're going to find the converse and negate them. So the converse and the inverse forms the contrapositive. So what would the contrapositive of our statement be? We have to change the order and add knots. So we would say if... There's not a ball game. Then 
It's not Friday. See how I added knots to both statements? And I changed the order of them. That's a contrapositive. Okay, so we've got a statement that says, if you play the trumpet, then you play a brass instrument. Is that a true statement? No. Yes. It is. It is true. If you play the trumpet, then you play a brass instrument. Now, it wants us to write the converse of this and determine if it's true. So what would the converse of this statement be? Yep, so the converse is where we change the order that they're stated. So the converse would be if, no, if you play a brass instrument, then it's a trumpet. Absolutely. So that's the converse. If you play a brass instrument, then it's a trumpet. Now, is this a true statement? Yes. No. Why not? Because there's multiple brass instruments. Give me an example. Trombone. Trombone. So if I play a brass instrument, the trombone is a brass instrument, then it's a trumpet. No, it's not. It's a trombone. Right? So you just need one counterexample to prove that this is false. So whenever I write the converse, it's not always the same value as the original statement, right? When I change the order, I could change the value, the truth value associated with it. Converse of AB. You done with A yet? Okay, all right. What's the converse of A? Oh, it has four sides than a polygon. So if it has four sides... then the polygon is a quadrilateral. So we agreed the original statement is true, right? If it's a quadrilateral, it has four sides. Now what about the converse? If it has four sides, then the polygon is a quadrilateral. So if I have, if I draw a shape that has four sides, is it a poly? Is it a quadrilateral? Yeah, it is. So this time the converse is also true. Now it doesn't always have to be true. We just proved that before, but that can still be true sometimes. All right. What about B part? What would be the converse? If angle measures add to 90, then the angles are complementary. Now, is that true? If I have two angles that had to be 90, are they automatically complementary? Yes, they are. That's what makes complementary angles. Complementary angles are two angles that add to be 90. Thumb is even. So the first thing I need to do is write the contrapositive to this. Mm -hmm. So how do we write a contrapositive? 
We have to add knots and we have to change the order. You have to do both. That's what makes it, yeah, don't, don't, don't be grumpy towards me. Okay. If. If two whole numbers. We are. We're fixing to. But I don't want to say if their sum is not even. Because what am I talking about? When I say there, I don't know what it is. So I'm going to say this. If two whole numbers sum is not even. I'm still taking this statement first. But I'm just changing where the there is at. If two whole numbers sum is not even. Then both are not even. I'm just going to add both numbers. So now I've added knots to both statements and I've changed the position of both statements. Now let's determine if we think that this is a true statement. So let's look at the original one. If I have two whole numbers that are even, if you add them together, do you always get something that's even? Yes. Yes. Think of any two even numbers. Four and six. Add them together, I get ten. So just try some in your head. Okay, yeah, that's going to work. If I add two even numbers, their sum is always even. Now let's look at this one. I have two whole numbers that add together to give me, what does it mean, not even? Odd. Two numbers add together to give me an odd number. Then both numbers are not even. So I, let's say that I've got two numbers that add to be 11. Can both numbers be even to give me 11? No. I could do 10 and 1, but that gives me 1 even, 1 odd. 9 and 2, 1 even, 1 odd. 8 and 3, 1 odd. So, you do 1 and 1, both odd numbers are going to be even. Yes, but that's not the statement. The statement says I add two numbers together and get an odd answer. Then I can tell you both numbers cannot be even. That statement alone is true. You're right. That's a whole other level. That's a different question. But for this one, it is also... All right, so maybe you need to pay better attention when we're teaching. You think of that? What's the converse, guys? If tomorrow is Monday, if tomorrow is Monday, then today is a weekend day. Is that is that a true statement? It is. So this time the converse was true. All right. What is the inverse? Crazy. <laughs> if she didn't know the converse, she's not going to know the inverse. What's the inverse, guys? Go ahead. Today is not a weekend day. Then tomorrow is not Monday. And what's the 
truth value of that statement? Is that true or false? Thank you much. You got them all in there and and zip? Oh, they're not zip. Okay, they look zip. Sorry to interrupt the math time. Is this true or false? That's true. That's also true. If today is not a weekend, then tomorrow is not Monday. Well, yeah. I agree. Okay, and then the contrapositive. Me, me. No. Braylon. No. Wait, I, I want to. Please, Mr. Braylon. I can do it. Yeah, I don't want to be okay. Please. 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 Everybody, what is it? If, yeah. if tomorrow <laughs> is not Monday, then today is not a weekend. Correct. If tomorrow is not Monday, Then today is not a weekend day. Here's how we do that. We can say two lines intersect at right angles. And we're going to say if and only if. And what that means is you can flip this statement around. It's true in either direction. It's a biconditional statement. Two lines intersect at right angles if and only if they are perpendicular. What wants us to do here is write both conditionals that are um, stated in this statement. It says a triangle is equilateral if and only if it has three congruent sides. So we're going to rewrite this into the two conditional statements that are true. We know it's biconditional because it has this statement. If and only if means that the conditional statement can go in either direction. So my two conditional statements are if a triangle is equilateral, then it has three congruent sides. All right, and that's just basically in the same order that it just was in. And then the other conditional statement would be if I switch it around. If a triangle has three congruent sides, then it is equilateral. So I'm just basically writing the conditional statement in both directions by that if and only if. Okay, so our two conditionals here, we should have gotten if the product of two numbers is negative then the numbers have opposite signs. What in the world just happened? Whoa. What did I just do? Okay, that's the first one. And then what's the second conditional statement if the numbers so let's say this if two numbers 
have opposite signs. It just sounds a little bit better. Then the product of the numbers is negative. 